Whoa, whoa, whoa. You lollygagged the ball around the end. You lollygag your way down to first. first. That reference was meant for me, I think. I think he's talking about me. This is a simple game. You throw the ball. You hit the ball. You catch the ball. You got it? Now we have got a 12-day road trip starting tomorrow. Let's leave 6 in the morning. 6 a.m.? 6 a.m.? I sleep in on Saturday mornings. Besides, I got my karaoke competition tonight. Greetings baseball fans and welcome to the Suicide Squeeze Baseball Show here on the Fireball Review Channel. Well, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The world has been waiting for a moment four years in the making. It's quite frankly the most momentous moment in the history of YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to be running down my top ten greatest baseball movies of all time. It's finally here. Let's go! Hey! Ah! 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 Picture it, baseball fans. The year is 1988. The Los Angeles Dodgers have just won the World Series, highlighted by Kirk Gibson's heroic home run in Game 1 of that series against the A's. Former college baseball player George Herbert Walker Bush is elected the 41st President of the United States, and my oldest sister is born that year, unleashing a reign of terror that still continues to present-day time. And according to a 2003 article by Sports Illustrated, the greatest sports movie of all time is released that year, depicting the characters from the wild, wacky world of minor league baseball. And I am speaking, of course, of Bull Durham. Now, the real-life Durham Bulls minor league baseball team is depicted in this film, and these guys are absolutely mired in a horrendous season. They can't do diddly poo. And even one of the lone bright spots for the Bulls, the prize pitching phenom by the name of Calvin Nuke Lelouch, played by Timothy Robbins, is a utterly hot mess. This guy doesn't know if he's coming or going. He's beating the Bulls mascot. He has major control problems. He's fooling around both figuratively and literally before the game. He's wearing women's underwear. He's got a massively large ego. Just think if Justin Bieber was a minor league baseball pitcher. He would be Calvin Nuke Lelouch. This guy is a mess. Cannot be serious! The Bulls also have a super fan slash groupie by the name of Annie Savoy, played by Susan Sarandon, who, how do I say this on a family video, uh, has a certain... Zest for living. And every season, Annie elects one Bulls baseball player to date for that particular season. She basically goes through Bulls baseball players, kind of like the Mariners go through Major League managers. But all jokes aside, Annie isn't the type of girl that you're going to take to a baseball game and she's going to be on her phone the entire time or reading a book. I actually went to an Angels game one time and I noticed a couple sitting in the Diamond Club, the most exclusive part of Angel Stadium. And this lady sitting next to this guy was reading a book the entire game. L let me give you some dating advice, fellas. If a lady is reading a book and you take her to a baseball game and you spring for seats like that, if you spring for seats in the nosebleed section and she's reading a book the entire time, you need to get up and just get the hell out of there. Let her take an Uber home because that is unacceptable behavior. You wouldn't see Annie doing something like that, though. She knows her baseball. She knows the history of the game. She knows the techniques behind the art of pitching. And she's trying to help Nuke Lelouch along the way to try to make him a big leaguer. So as the Bulls grow more and more impatient with Nuke's inconsistencies on the mound, they decide to bring in minor league veteran catcher Crash Davis, played by Kevin Costner. And I think Kevin Costner, there must have been some sort of constitutional amendment in the 80s and 90s saying that Kevin Costner had to appear in every single baseball movie in those two decades because it seemed like he was in everything during that time period. And this dude, Crash Davis, he has been through the wars. He has hit more home runs than any minor leaguer in the history of baseball. So essentially, he is a career minor leaguer, but he likes to point out in the film that he spent the 21 greatest days at the big league level at one point in his career in his younger years. Now he's been brought into the Bulls to sort of tutor Nuke Lelouch to show him the ropes, to teach him pitch selection, to teach him proper etiquette, but Nuke is having none of it. And to further complicate things, a love triangle begins between Nuke 
and Crash and Annie and chaos ensues. Now as I alluded to a little bit earlier, in 2003 Sports Illustrated said this was the greatest sports movie of all time and you might be asking yourself, why do you have Bull Durham as far down your list as I do in the number 10 spot? And there's a few reasons for that. One of them is that I didn't really grow up on this movie. I was a wee little lad when this movie came out and for some for some unforeseen reason, my parents did not want me watching this film when I was a little child and I still, for the life of me, can't figure out why. I cannot be serious! And even though Bull Dorm is considered to be a comedy film, I've never really seen it in that light. I've always thought it was a little bit of a sad movie, to be quite honest with you. I mean, trust me, there are numerous comedic scenes in this film that are absolute comic gold. But I'm not the only one that sees it as a sad film. Mickey Mantle saw this movie uh, right after it came out in the 80s, and it, he was interviewed by somebody, and they said, Mickey, wasn't that a funny movie? And he says, no, uh, I knew a lot of minor league guys coming up through the Yankees system that were really good ball players, and they never made it. I mean, and they make they made no money. They still make no money. I mean, basically, these guys are paid in Happy Meals at this point, particular point in time. And these guys were good ball players. They probably would have made it on maybe another team or if they had the right manager, they had the right pitching coach and whatnot. And that's basically who Crash Davis is. He's a guy that just never could quite get a break. He maybe wasn't quite good enough to be a really good Major League Baseball player, but you felt like in the film, maybe if he got a, a break here and there earlier in his career, he would have made it. Now he's at the end of his rope, and you just see the sadness on his face. Coster does a good job in his acting abilities, showing that. And the film, for me, kind of ends on somewhat of a melancholy moment. I mean, Crash never makes it back to the big leagues, which is not a shock. I mean, the guy's like 35 years of age at this point in time. You ain't making it back to the big leagues if you're in the minor leagues at 35 years old. It's just not going to happen. But it just doesn't have that happy ending that a lot of sports movies have. And, you know, to me, I want to see a happy ending at the end of a movie, especially a sports movie. There's enough sadness in the world going along. I can turn on the news and be depressed. I don't want to pay, like, 20 bucks to go to a movie theater and be more depressed. But again, there is some great comedy in this film. The mound visit between Crash Davis and Nuke Lelouch and all the infielders and the pitching coach comes out is one of the best in any baseball movie of all time. It's absolutely hilarious. It's one of the reasons why I think we need to have all the players mic'd up during the games. I would love to hear the nonsensical conversations that go on during pitching visits. Candlesticks always make a nice gift and... Uh... Maybe you can find out where she's registered, maybe a place setting or maybe a silverware package. And another great thing about Bull Dorm is the realism of the actual action on the field. Kevin Costner apparently was a college baseball player at Cal State Fullerton, or I want to say maybe he tried out for the team at Fullerton. And you can, it really shows. I mean, he actually looks like a baseball player. Tim Robbins played, I think, at some point, maybe in high school or something. Because usually, you know, you see an actor, you see a baseball movie being made, and you can tell these Poindexter actors, th these dudes have never played baseball in their life, and it shows. This movie, very realistic. Ron Shelton, the director, and I think he wrote the screenplay for this film, if I'm not mistaken, actually was a minor league baseball player, and he made sure that the scenes in this film were very realistic. In any event, Bull Dorm is definitely worth a watch. Not a lot of minor league movies out there. There was one other minor league movie that, that bizarrely enough came out one year before Bull Dorm. It's called Long Gone. Nobody has ever seen this movie, I think, on planet Earth except for me. I enjoyed it immensely. Not quite good enough to make this list. Didn't have the character development that Bull Dorm does, but definitely worth a watch. Go see Long Gone, go see Bull Dorm. They're both good films, but we're reviewing Bull Dorm today. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It's not a shockingly great movie. We're gonna we're gonna be reviewing some shockingly great movies a little bit further along as we go through the weeks here in this list. But I'm giving Bull Dorm 8.5 filet fishes out of a possible 10. So now I want to hear from you fine folks. Have you seen Bull Dorham? Do you like Bull Dorham? Are your parents still not letting you watch Bull Dorham like my parents didn't let me watch it for numerous years because of the numerous zest for life moments in the film? And do I have this film too low on this list? Should this be a little bit higher? Let me know down below and remember the number 9 greatest baseball movie will be released next Monday at 
10 a.m. Eastern, that is 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and as always, hit that dislike button if you didn't like this video. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. I will be taking attendance. Take care, guys.